Richie Towell, you're very welcome to the show this morning here on OTBAM. Um, how are you getting on? Hey, thanks very much. Um, yeah, not not too bad. I'm kind of just in the same boat as as everyone else um, in the country and probably in the world at the moment. Um, it's, it's a difficult time for everybody, but it's a bit of a strange time as well. But it's, it's for me, it's it's been it's been nice as well. I've been able to spend a bit of time with my family and spend mornings with my two kids and. I have to go up and rush off to try and land games and, and stuff like that. So sometimes you have to take the good out of the bad that's happening, you know. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and uh, as I said there, Stephen Kenny fully understands exactly what's going on. These are very unusual circumstances, and that's why he has been named manager a couple of months before he was scheduled to be. You know him very well. He signed you for Dundalk. Um, what, what what is it that makes Stephen Kenny a manager who's ready for this gig right now, Richie? It's just, it's just, he's an amazing manager, first of all, and and he's he's an amazing man. He is, you know, he does, he doesn't just think of the team. He thinks, he thinks of everybody. Like a lot of managers always focus on on their best eleven players, and and that's it. Where with Stephen, it's it's a real team effort, and that's that's really true from the people who make the tea at the club. That's what he was like at Dundalk. He made everybody feel like they were they were part of the family. And, and I think he'll do that with Ireland um, as well. Obviously, it will, it will be a bit harder because he only gets to have lads for a certain amount of time of the year with, with because, he's, because they're going to go back to their to their, to their clubs. But when he does have them there, I know that all the lads will, will love going and playing for Ireland and, and love going and playing for him. One of the things that um, there was a, a conversation yesterday about uh, what impact he might have immediately. Damien Delaney was talking about he's going to give the players confidence when they take the field that there's a style of play, that there's a, a pattern that they're trying to, to get to and that they're capable of doing that. There's no limit on their potential. Can you talk to us a bit about that? Because that's kind of what we... That's how we would characterise watching his dog team play. And even the under-21s, when they went... Again, Damien Delaney made the point, you know, they went out playing Italy. They weren't going, oh, Jesus, we'd be lucky to get a draw here. They're like, we're going to get the ball and we're going to keep the ball because we're talented footballers. How does he do that? How does he get players feeling confident that the right thing to do is to want possession, to try and get possession, to try and keep the ball and try and be on the ball all the time? Yeah, he, he just he just drilled that into us. Literally from the moment that we met up, he... he he just kept on at us. I mean, and every time we went down under the pitch, I don't know how I can't speak on on other lads' behalf really, but I always felt like I was the best player going out onto the pitch. I always felt like I wanted the ball. I always wanted to be the one to take free kicks, take penalties. I always wanted to, to be on the ball. I always wanted to create chances, to take shots. He, he never ever put put the shackles on it and said, "No, you you must do this and you must do that." He, he said, if you get into the final court, you, you do what you want to do. If you want to have a shot, you want to dribble, you want to commit defenders. And, and that's the freedom that he gives you. And as I said, just his team talks are, are so inspirational. Yeah. Um, every game you go out, you believe you can win. You never, even if you're playing in Europe and, and you know that the team has got bigger budgets and, and, and better players on paper, going out to the game, you always felt we can win this and we can win this comfortably. I never thought oh, the wheel just try and stay in the game and until the last few minutes he was just like I remember we went over to play I played Boris all the way from home to a great head at the time and we're a massive underdogs and he just said, No, we're going there to win and we're going there to keep the ball and as soon as we went out on the pitch after five, ten minutes we realised right, we're actually just as good as they and and I I'll never forget that game over there. I think we we got a draw or they maybe narrowly beat us, but he absolutely battered them off the park with it. And, and when we came in, he said, I told you, like, I, I knew we were capable of doing it, but now you need to believe in it. And I think that's what he'll bring to the Irish side, you know. I think the last few Ireland teams have always been, been like, all right, we, we, we'll see how the game goes, and, and, and then we'll try and get them in the last few minutes where I know with Steve, and, and, and especially where. With his, his under 21 team it's the exact same they, they'll just go for the juggler straight away they, they'll go to win the game and they'll go to keep the ball and they'll go to have high intensity in that pressing to, and when they get the ball they want to keep and create a lot of chances which is which is what every fan wants to see when they watch football yeah like it, it sounds as if 
we're going to see a bit of a difference in terms of attitude as much as anything else. Like, I, I don't want to be too harsh on Nick McCarthy, and perhaps this is more of a criticism of Martin O'Neill here, but we have seen in the past, Richie, that Irish players have been talked down a little, little bit, I think it's fair to say, whereas this seems it'll be the opposite, that we are we, we want to talk about how Stephen Kenny will play football and, and what his on-pitch philosophy will be, but actually probably the most important thing is what he's going to communicate to the players and the belief he will give to the players when they put on the green jersey. Yeah, he, he'll have all that in them straight away. Obviously, I, I, I wasn't a part of it under the, the previous two matches, so I can't speak to how players felt then or, or, or what their message was given to the players. Cause I don't know, but all I know is that I know that with Stephen, he will install them on that. They are, are going to be the best players on the pitch. They are going to be the better team, and he's going to install how, how they're going to play. Obviously, it's going to take time. It, is. It, it, it takes time with everything, even, I think... With us with Dunbarke, it happened rapidly. It did um, because the, the, the group that he got together was amazing. And, 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 and to be fair, the, the group that he got together there were, were, were people that nobody else wanted, you know. So um, he got us together and we, we just wanted to learn. And I hope that the players, um, the Little Warren players, I hope that they, they do the same. I hope they buy into what, what he says and I hope that, that they listen to him because. If they do, he will definitely steer them in the right direction. Are you hopeful that they'll buy in, Richie? I'm sorry? Are, are you expecting them to fully buy in? Like, I think that that's been a... a, a it's been a, a little bit of a worry. Like, I think, really, when you look at his under-21 management, and he, he, like anybody who uh, has any knowledge of football knows that there is no reason to have any concerns about Stephen Kenny in terms of getting the respect from the dressing room. But strange things have happened. Is that, is that a concern for you at all, that he doesn't actually claim the respect of the entire dressing room immediately? Yeah, I, I think he'll get the respect straight away. Um, and and not just because of what he's already done in football, because of the person that he is. Um, Stephen, he's a great man, he is. Um, he's a real family man. Um, I know that his, his wife and his daughters and his, his sons used to go and watch all the games and he was very um, interested in other, other players' families as well. You know, he, he used to always ask how they were getting on. Um, he used to, like, as soon as I had my, my two kids, he was, he was on to me asking, saying congratulations and, and, and asking how they were and how my partner was. So, but that's, that's the way Stephen is. He, he, really, he really looks after his players and, and he, wants to know, he wants to know how their family life is. And, and, and I think that's, that's the sort of person he is. So I know that I know a lot of the lads that's in the in the Ireland squad. They all have they all have families and and kids and, and stuff like that. So I think I think they'll have a mutual respect in, in that sense. And, and I just know that that as soon as they they walk with Stephen, that just straight away they, they'll realise the person that he is and, and the coach that he is as well. You know, and, and then obviously when it comes around to the games, they, they'll they'll soon realise that that they believe that that he'll be able to instill in them, and hopefully they can one do great things. Yes. Just, uh, yeah, and surrounded himself on, the, on his background. Can I ask you, Richie, about team shape? Sorry, I have to cut him off there a little bit. I think, I think Ger was just going to hop in and ask you about uh, the team shape there. Yeah, don't uh, worry, Richie. Just, can you hear me now? Uh, Sorry, Jerry. Yeah, just in terms of, now, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry, I think we've just got a bit of a, a delay on a couple of the lines here, Richie. Just in terms of uh, the, the team shape, Morning, I think what, what Joe was trying to get at there. Uh, what Stephen Kenny, like we've heard from you there brilliantly about how he's going to motivate the players, how he's going to communicate with the players. But what is he actually going to communicate to these Irish players? Do you think what what is the actual plan going to be, and how discernibly different will it be for Mick McCarthy? Um. I don't know what, what sort of tactic Stephen is going to do because obviously it depends on personnel, doesn't it? Um, I know at, at some Dock, he, he just wanted high energy, high pressing, attacking football. That's, that's what he wanted there. And, and obviously we, we had the players there at the time to do it. We had the likes of Dal Horgan and Darren Mean and that one with, with lots of pace. Me, Chris Seals, Ronan Finn, players like that in, in the middle of the park that would all get around and and obviously with me and me and Ron and Finn, we, we used to get forward a hell of a lot and, and shoot them with balls. So I would imagine he, he would want his midfielders and his winners uh, chipping in and helping the strikers with the goals. So it would be great to see 
Ireland playing the, the type of football that, that we did at Dundalk, you know, because I think everybody could see in the country that, that we used to play really attractive football. Um, and, and we used to play fast, attacking, and we used to just we used to take chances at the back, you know, we used to play out. And I think that's what fans want to see, you know, fans. I don't really want to see cagey football anymore. Um, mm. They want to see the likes of the way Man City and, and Liverpool and even see with the likes of Wolves and, and things like that. You know, they, they keep the ball at the back and, and then they have their two, the two full-backs that are bombing on constantly. And, and that's what Stephen wants to well, You know, and I went with Dan Massey and, and Sean Gannon who used to tell them to keep going forward. Even if one has gone forward, the other one go forward as well. And that's the type of football we used to play at the dock and, and it was great to be a part of and I'm sure it was great for the fans to watch so if it's, if it's something similar I'm sure the players will love it and, and then obviously if the, if the players are loving it and enjoying their football it will hopefully um, end up with, with good results because ultimately that's how it's going to be judged you know um, it's, how, it's how results go so as a fan I hope that that, that Ireland are, are winning that's the main thing mm. Like I guess the question then, and this is almost a, a defeatist Irish fan. This is me, like almost channeling my Martin O'Neill here asking this question. But do we have the players in the Republic of Ireland senior team to then enact that? Because like with Dundalk, obviously a great bunch of players uh, in the, the League of Ireland. We talk about Manchester City and Liverpool, two of the best squads in the Premier League. How will Stephen Kenny be able to do that against better international opposition? Yeah, I think you know, we we have we have really good players playing for us, you know. We have mm. I think the majority of our players are playing the Premier League, you know, and that's the likes of Seamus Common, Emma Stevens, Shane Duffy, like Jeff Hendrick, Robbie Brady, you know what I mean? We have have a, a lot, a lot of good talent there. So I think with the good talent that we have, um um and how Stephen makes you feel and how he how he's gonna make them feel like they're the best players, I think it's it's gonna be a recipe for good things and and obviously, time will tell that, but fingers crossed, then um, all just click together. Yeah, like, and that idea that you mentioned there of midfielders coming forward, chipping in with a lot more, I think that's something that uh, Irish people have been looking for for a while. We've mentioned Jason Malumbi's name on the show quite a bit this morning, and he's almost the instant personification of that, isn't he? The the uh, forward-running midfielder who's chipping in with a couple of goals, but with a couple of attempts every game for Millwall. But he's also coming through Stephen Kenny's under-21 setup. It's almost as if his rise has aligned nicely with Stephen Kenny's rise, placing an added tactical importance on his attacking midfielders. Yeah, Jason, I, I, I work with this man at Brighton, um, and, and he is 100% going to play for us. Um, there's no doubt about it on my eyes. Jason is a top, top player, um, and he's a great person as well. Um, really hard walking, and um, as a midfielder, he can he can do it all. Um, he can head tackle, he can get around the pack, he can drive the team forward. He's a real leader. He is so. I'm sure that Stephen has, has probably earmarked him as, as someone who can doesn't go into the team. Um, I have no doubt that Jason is good enough to to go and play for Ireland. And I think it will be sooner rather than later that he will. But even going back to what you what you said there, I think his under 21 team um, has a lot of really good players and. I think everybody knows what what Stephen is like. He is he has no no issue in, in putting young players in, and, and he doesn't care what anyone else thinks. You know, if 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 they're if they're, if they're good enough, that's that's all that counts. And um, his his under twenty one team was was a was a really exciting team to watch, and uh, I have no doubt that that he will he will he will put a lot of them in. A personal level, does having somebody like Stephen Kenny manage the senior national team have an impact on your own career ambitions? Is there like a when when you heard this news, did you think, yeah, look, you know, I'm I'm playing for Salford City, obviously at the moment. You've got some Premier League experience in terms of knowing exactly what the expectations are, and everybody involved in this Ireland setup has played throughout the the different levels of of football in England. Does it does it? change your own frame of mind about how you think about what's coming next in your own career? No, I never, I never change, changes my mind, to be honest. Um, I'm always a very driven person anyway, um, so I always just, just do what I need to do, you know. Um, I, I don't get me wrong, I was, I was over the mill when, when it was announced that Stephen, 
Stephen got the job, why I'll text him, I'll text him straight away and congratulate him. Um, because he's just that sort of person. He's had, he's had probably other than than my parents and my family, he's had the biggest influence on my career over over anyone else. Um, I was probably going to stop playing football only for Stephen, so um, I owe him a lot. Um, and, and he's probably made me the person that I am today by by his work ethic and, and how he thinks. Um, that, that's probably been instilled in me, and I'm a very driven person anyway. So for me. I just need to, <laughs> first of all, get back playing because nobody's playing football anymore, which is probably yeah. the most frustrating thing. You'll have a lot of time on a chance to, to go back over previous games, which would probably be a good thing for them, but I think it's frustrating time for everyone. So for me, first and foremost, I need to just get back playing. Uh, and, and obviously, we're, we are starting to put a good run together as well, but um, a really good, really, really good team now. Obviously, me and Darren Gibson were, were playing the last couple of games in this field together after after Gibbo signing. So, um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully, if, if everything gets up and running, uh, Stephen wants more than once again, and, and, and we see how it goes. But um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't help me breath on that to be honest, because there's, there's a lot of players playing at playing at higher level than me. Even you speak about the likes of Jason Malone. He's playing the championship weekend with Gilbert Millwall and, and he's and he's flying. And you have other midfielders, uh, Jeff Hendricks from Paradise, you know. So um, yeah, you never know. Yeah. You never know. I, exactly. I, I'd always be optimistic yeah. I would. Yeah, you're right to be though. He obviously he obviously really rates you, Richie. And you've been great with your time this morning. I hope um I hope you stay well and hope you're ready for whenever the football kicks back in. Great to have you with us. Thanks a million. Cheers, thank you. Bye bye.